I've created a lot of cash flowing properties in the last 13 years, but this is perhaps the best one so far. Not in raw profits, but bang for the buck, definitely the most worthwhile. Stick around, I'll share with you how much it costs me to build out this space, furnish it, and market it. And then I'll share with you exactly how much I made in my first year using Airbnb and VRBO. Spoiler alert, this one property more than pays for all of my living expenses. So before we jump into it, let's take a quick tour of the home. Now, if you're new to the channel, my name is Kai and I quit my job at 27, bought some land and hand built this whole home that you see around us. And right now, this is actually the rental home or the rental suite. And I make videos on this channel on how to learn more about making money, keeping money, growing it, and other little things that helps make the day-to-day -day life a little bit easier for us all. So if that kind of stuff interests you, subscribe right here or the big red button just down below. All right, now a quick little tour of the home. You can see right here, you can see basically the whole studio apartment. You've got where I was just sitting right there filming. That's the living area with the TV, boop, right there. We've got the kitchen, dining area, and then the piece de resistance, that's how you say it in French, is this beautiful view. It's actually November. We got some great weather out here right now, so not too bad. And you've got this wraparound deck with the barbecue right here. So walking through here, walking through the kitchen, we go back here to the back half of the home or the studio, and you get the master bedroom. Nice queen size bed right here with these nice little individual reading lamps. Come right over here, you got the master bath. Nice and spacious for only a 600 square foot space. You got a full bath and tub combo. Now, some people like to come out and stay for a while, so we also included a walk-in closet with washer dryer. And then some good storage space for folks when they stay for a bit. And that pretty much wraps up the rental tour. It's really nice and open and airy and for 600 square feet, it's one of my favorite spots because it feels a lot bigger and the amount of light that comes in is just fantastic. Now enough of this tour, let's jump into the numbers and see exactly why this property outperforms other homes of mine and other rentals that have two, three, four bedrooms and offices inside the city. Let's dig into that, let's go. So here's one of the accounts that I use for my shipping container home. Right here you can see the monthly bookings and then here is obviously the current month where we just hit November, it's November 1st today at the time of this filming. And these are all the previous months. The difference in colors is uh, dark blue is the what has been paid out and then the light blue is what is expected or what's been booked but hasn't um, occurred yet. Now here, if I jump into my other account here um, in VRBO or also HomeAway, they both own it. Well, actually they're owned by Expedia now, is that I made just shy of $700, which is something I wanna to get to in a little bit. That's something very interesting about VRBO and what's happening to them as a company. But remind me, and we'll jump back into that here in a little bit. Now, at first, I really didn't expect this property to be such a high performer. Being out in the country, smaller space, and honestly, being that far outside the city, I didn't expect anything that great from it. But I figured I could at least get some sort of income to help pay for the taxes and maybe even some of the maintenance bills for the property and for the home itself. So I expected about maybe seven to maybe $9,000 a year with a high goal of 18,000 if everything went spectacularly well. And as you can see, I far surpassed that. But if we come back over here and we scroll down a little bit, these are the numbers that we really want to look at and manage when you are running or owning any type of short-term rental. The most important one is obviously your average nightly rate and then also this occupancy rate right here. 89%. These numbers are numbers that I don't normally see unless it's a home or property very close to the center of a major city. And to see 89% and then just this last month, look at this right here in October, look at that. 100% occupancy rate. So in short, these metrics were a very welcome surprise. Now what I think played into this was that the home is a lot more unique than anything else in the area. It has this gorgeous view and I was also accepted the Airbnb Plus program, which is their premium and their nicer properties that are on the site. And the other thing that I think is an incredibly key factor is receiving as many five-star reviews as I possibly can for my guest services and also cleanliness, which gives me an average of 4.94 rating out of five. 
So similar to the YouTube algorithm, the more and higher these metrics are, the more it works in your favor. Your property gets advertised more, you get more views, as we can see right here. Well, this is just for the month of October, but overall it's an upward trend in number of views, thus giving you more bookings. And if you're really interested in helping my YouTube algorithm, go ahead and smash that like button if you're liking this video so far. Thanks. Now, all these things combined really helped me make this property successful. And I try to replicate and copy a lot of these aspects into my other listings. But there are a few interesting things to note if you're curious in doing something similar for either short-term or long-term rentals. Now, the first thing is to be ready to adapt and change. Now, I've been a part of this game since 2008, 2009, and I've been here from the very beginning where VRBO was still this grungy, early 2000s type of website. Now, earlier I mentioned something interesting about VRBO when compared to Airbnb. The fact is, is that back in 2008, 2009, Airbnb wasn't even really around yet. They were just getting launched. And 99, maybe even actually 100% of my bookings came from VRBO and then eventually HomeAway, which are sister sites. How things have changed in just the past few years where it has completely flipped. Almost 99% of my bookings come from Airbnb now. And HomeAway and VRBO, which are owned by Expedia, don't really push a lot of traffic through to any of my properties. At first, I thought it was just one because of the location, but I pretty much found out after three, four, five, six, seven different properties, I wasn't getting the traffic that I used to get through the VRBO website. But this is nothing new in the world or the realm of business. This is just the changing landscape, changes that happen with regulations and restrictions based on counties, states, and the competitive environment. So Airbnb quickly surpassed VRBO, and I still have a little bit of a trickle that comes through from bookings.com, VRBO HomeAway, Expedia, sites like that. But hands down, Airbnb is the best one. Now, the super interesting thing is that I used to actually hate Airbnb. They had horrible customer service, their user interface was kind of clunky, kind of put together, and they were geared towards a very different customer base. They were more geared towards what seemed like millennials were trying to do some sort of room share or home share, instead of professionals trying to actually manage and run a professional business of short-term rentals or running a property management company, like what I was trying to do. But man, how things have changed in the last few years for Airbnb. They continue to develop, grow, and improve their product and services. Whereas VRBO and HomeAway, they very much stayed stagnant. They kept on trying to do certain things, but they became complacent with their market share. And honestly, now that I've switched over to Airbnb, I cannot say enough about how great their customer service is and on both sides of the host and as a guest. And now they're very much the big fish in a small pond and VRBO and HomeAway lost all of that share. Now, one thing I do wanna note is that Airbnb has been increasing their fees for both the host as well as the guests very recently. Now. I'm not super keen about that, but they offer you a $1 million host guarantee if damages happen to your property. And I've had to call this in a few times with guests destroying or damaging something within the home. With all that said, going back to my original statement is be prepared to adapt and change. We don't know if a new company is gonna come out and put out Airbnb just like how they put out VRBO. Or even worse, if your city or your county completely makes it illegal or fills restrictions up to the brim so you can't even do short-term rentals anymore. Have a backup plan. Number two, it's better to be different than to be better. Now this speaks volumes in all different industries, especially on YouTube, like when I'm trying to grow this channel. And that's because you can only compete so much by being better. If you really want to be successful, it's be better or be good enough, but also be different. Offer something else. Sure, of course it helps having keyless entry and fresh coffee and tea in the home, along with a flexible cancellation schedule and a designer grade kitchen. However, all of those are relatively easy to come by. And when it's easy to come by, it becomes the expected norm. And what becomes the expected norm is now the new standard. So mints on the pillow, organic shampoo, organic body wash, it's not really gonna drive you the traffic that you really want to be profitable with your short-term rental. Instead, give your guests all of those things and a view that nobody else has, or a location off the beaten path. 
but perhaps even more importantly is to give them an experience and a story that they can take back home well after their trip. It's way cooler to say that you stayed in a 40 foot tree house an hour away from civilization and you watched the sunset over the horizon than to say that you stayed in a 600 square foot modern ADU in someone's backyard. One is very unique and the other is a dime a dozen. But don't fret if you don't have that 25 acres to build that tree house out of school buses yet. There's always a first step, whether that's an extra home or an extra room or a spare basement. The thing is, is get going, gain experience, build your income, and slowly work your way to the top. And if you wanna help me out, I wanna help you out to get $25. I'm gonna put a link down in the description below. Where if you click on that, you can start hosting completely for free and actually you get paid for it and it helps out the channel. So check that out just down below. Okay, so let's get back to the numbers. So how much of those earnings that I showed you a few minutes ago, how much do I actually get to keep? Let's take a look. So here we are back at the chalkboard where I think it'll do you a little bit better to be able to see what I'm talking about. So that entire space down there that we saw at the beginning of this video, it cost me $18,000 to build out. I want us to remember that number. That right there is called primary sunk investment. It's how much money went into something before it gets up and going to basically create you cash. Now this figure here includes everything. It includes drywall, the screws, the framing, fixtures, all the way to the furniture. Now the difference is, is that I did all the labor myself. So I saved myself a big chunk of change just by doing that. Now the seven acres that the property is located on, it cost me roughly $4,500 a year in taxes, about $1,750 in utilities, $1,200 in insurance, and then about maybe $1,000 plus or minus for maintenance stuff. All said and done, it's a total of roughly $8,500 a year or $700 a month. Now let's look at expenses or costs of actually running the rental. I've got expenses for the rental itself is about $3,000 give or take again per year between cleaning and supplies. So now that we know all of our expenses and our primary sunk investment right up here, keep that in mind. Now let's say that I'm gonna bring in about $34,000 in gross revenue for the property this year. So for this $34,000 right here, I know that it's gonna cost me $3,000 to get here, right? So we have this baseline right here. We're gonna draw a cross of $3,000. It automatically hacks away at this bottom part because I know that I'm gonna be having a profit of roughly $31,000. And remember, this is pre-federal tax cash flow. The cool thing about the sites, or not, if, depending on who you are, is that all rental sites now, they basically take and pay your county and state taxes so you can't even touch it. But you're still responsible for paying your federal taxes. That's this number right here. Now in business, when you invest in a new project or property, there's something called payout. And essentially what payout is, is how long does it take for you to pay off your initial sunk investment? So in this case, how long does it get us to pay this off? Now typically, if it's a three to four year project or payout, that's actually pretty decent. It's not the greatest, but it's pretty good. Now in real estate, the cost of construction, permits, and acquiring property, it's so high, you don't really talk about payout. What you instead talk about is cash flow. And usually a 10 to 20% cash flow, you're sitting pretty. But as you can see here, we were able to hit payout within seven to eight months. And if you made it this far in the video, go down in the comment section and type in fast payout. And every once in a while, I'll scrounge through the videos in the comment section and I'll pick somebody for the prize wheel and we'll spin it in the next live stream. And so this is why this property is the best bang for the buck. I was able to reach payout within seven months. And then that doesn't even include all the additional cash flows that's gonna keep on spitting out. But let's dig into that a little bit more. So at first glance, $31,000 is not a lot of money. And actually in most major cities and areas all across the country, $31,000 is very close to the poverty line. But in this situation, I'm able to live pretty well. I can fund a lot of projects, I get to travel, do all my hobbies, and I eat really well. All with just one rental. Here's why. I've worked really, really hard to become a true minimalist, especially when it comes to my expenses. I have dropped all of my fixed period costs down as low as I possibly can go. Whereas now I'm living on seven acres in my mortgage-free dream home, paying 
$700 a month. What that means is that when we take this annual expense, the $8,500, we put it back up here, right here, right? And you guys already know that my personal living expenses are already dirt cheap, hovering around maybe $350 to $400 a month, say $4,000. So between my personal expenses to live on, food, insurance, cell phone, that type of stuff, to the property itself, taxes, insurance, maintenance, to managing the business, this one rental of 3,000, I still have this big chunk of money right here, which is roughly, it's roughly $19,000. That's all extra cash. So my whole life is paid for and I get $19,000. That's one property. Every additional property or revenue stream I add onto this, it drops to the bottom line, which means that it just enters my bank account without having to pay any expenses. If I have another property that I add on here, another one here, here or even here this is just additional cash that i have to invest play with or do whatever i want without having to worry about expenses and things like this little guy right here it's like things that i'm experimenting and playing with like my youtube income it doesn't look like much but it's awfully nice not having to pay any other expenses because it's all taken care of by one income stream and that, my friends, is called being operationally leveraged in the world of business. And if you wanna be financially free at a relatively young age, this is the ticket. Outside of creating an app and selling it for a billion dollars or inheriting a small fortune, this is really the simplest, most straightforward way of really building wealth. Drop your monthly expenses so low so that you feel like you're rich off of $35,000 a year. It won't happen overnight, but give it some time. It might take you five years, 10 years, maybe even 15 years. Then when you hit that goal, increase your salary to $100,000, $200,000, but keep your expenses at the same level. Do that. Take all that extra cash flow and cash that's burning a hole in your pocket, reinvest it, and you just supercharge your way into building real wealth. And that's the easiest way to retire early and leverage some property. So if you like the container home and this is something that you think that you'd like to try your hand at, click on that link down in the description below. Get your 25 bucks and help me out and get start hosting today. Like the video if you liked it or not. But if you wanna see more videos on how to improve your personal finances and day-to-day -day life, get started, subscribe to the channel, and you'll get to see more details on me actually building out another shipping container rental property. In a bit, a video is gonna pop up right here that's gonna tell you a little bit more about how I made six figures with rentals. And then right here, if you've ever been interested in getting started in the stock market or where to go, and you have no idea how to even start, this is the place to go. And then right here, there's gonna be an icon of me surfing. You can click right there and subscribe to the channel, nice and easy. Thanks for tuning in today. I love you all. Peace out.